All right. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar using Plotly and R to create and update online dashboards. I'm Charlie Ferrari, um, lead the application engineering team at Plotly, and uh, I'll be uh, leading us today. So hello, everyone, and uh, let's get started. We'll start off just going through uh, a few slides here. So welcome to the webinar. Um, and just to highlight a few um, upcoming webinars, do a few, uh, some housekeeping before we get started with the uh, content. Uh, we do have another uh, Python uh, webinar coming up about building web applications with Dash. Um, and then we have um, another one coming up in December about building uh, online dashboards with Excel. Um, and a few other housekeeping uh, notes um, in terms of this webinar. And for all webinars, uh, replays will be available. The uh, code that I'm using will be available. And if you ever see me pause or the webinar stop, um, just refresh your page and you'll be able to um, hopefully get caught up again. Um, and we also have a uh, conference, uh, PlotCon, coming up uh, November 14th through 17th in uh, New York City. So uh, the venue is in the financial district, and you'll be able to uh, buy tickets at plot.ly. And if you're interested in this webinar, um, be sure to check out the Plotly and R Masterclass. Uh, Carson is the lead uh, Plotly R developer. He um, pretty much built the uh, our API from scratch, so uh, he's, he'll be a great resource to uh, help get everyone acquainted with uh, using Plotly in R. Um, so let's get started with uh, the content that we'll be going through. Um, just to kind of uh, give a broad intro to Plotly, it is multifaceted. There are lots of different ways to uh, use Plotly. Uh, Plotly Underlying everything is a JavaScript library. So it could be used uh, directly for web development uh, in that way. But uh, Plotly has an ecosystem surrounding it that makes it easier for data scientists to use no matter which environment they're in. So in this case, in, uh, today, we'll be going through the uh, Plotly API for R. Um, but there are um, various APIs uh, available for Python, MATLAB, and a few other um, languages. Um, there's also uh, plot, uh, plot.ly and Plotly on-premise, and these are the um, web ecosystems for Plotly. So um, it is possible to build Plotly visualizations using our online chart editor. Uh, we won't be getting into that just yet. We'll be focusing on uh, dashboards. And um, Plotly can be accessed via um, the web using um, professional accounts or uh, using our enterprise uh, on-premise server. Um, the on-premise server is um, available in a Docker container and can be put behind your company's firewall. Um, and if you go to Plotly slash uh, products, you'll get um, more information about the uh, different uh, account options that you have. So going from community, um, starting out with free public charts, and then all the way up to on-premise or professional. So with that, we'll be moving towards uh, working in R. Um, so starting out, we'll uh, be in R Studio, and we'll slowly make our way to um, the online ecosystem. We'll be using uh, Plotly, um, the dashboard creator, to actually create our dashboard and kind of show how everything, uh, how all aspects of the um, of the ecosystem are linked. So how you're able to use the um, R API to update uh, graphs on the dashboard. So if you want to, um, so first we'll just bring in uh, some data. And uh, the data that we'll be um, working with is a, um, 
an overview of uh, Fortune 100 companies. So um, we're going to look at uh, uh, some data, uh, some data um, list of uh, companies across uh, various states and different stats about those uh, companies. Now, with this data, um, we plan on um, creating several charts that give us uh, different views of this. And we're going to end up with a, a fully made dashboard. So here, you could see the, um, what we're going to uh, end up with. So um, using the dashboard creator, you're able to um, create pretty compelling um, presentations such as this. So to get started, we'll um, uh, start building our plots. So we basically have, um, have four graphs that we um, want to build here. And we'll just uh, build them one by one in R and kind of show how you could end up in a dashboard like this. So on one level, um, you're able to use Plotly just like any other um, plotting package within R Studio, within R. So, um, in this way, it's comparable to a package like ggplot. Um, if you're doing exploratory work within our studio, you're able to um, use Plotly to kind of explore your data in that way. Um, but now we'll be getting into presenting uh, that data, kind of the next stage of the uh, data science workflow. So starting out, um, we'll just get a comparison of um, you know, how many companies are in each state. So when you are using this like a uh, graphing package, um, you're able to view Plotly graphs uh, fully interactive within, your, um, within RStudio. And, the, um, and you're able to um, you know, just explore your data in this way and uh, sort of look at you know, how many companies are there and uh, kind of just get a handle of uh, what your data looks like. So what we're going to uh, do with this once we create our visualizations is to um, use API, uh, uh, the API create command. So whenever you create a Plotly visualization, you'll be able to um, just run this command to um, send your graphs to Plotly. So once you do that, you could see that the graph is showing up in, um, in its own separate window. And this just shows that it got sent to uh, my Plotly account. So if I were to go to my files, I'll be able to um, see um, to see where I posted this. So in this case, I have a separate webinar folder. And I'm able to see um, the, um, uh, the graph that I just sent. So this one is uh, my bar chart, but um, I have older versions of uh, the other charts that uh, I'm sending out. And just to you know, quickly overview, uh, go over the syntax, um, Plotly utilizes um, piping within uh, R. So you're able to um, add in your data and add different traces add, uh, and then edit your layout. So you can see we're kind of building a Plotly visualization in a stepwise uh, motion. If we had multiple charts, we would be able to, um, we would be able to uh, just add multiple traces and just um, you know be able to get that ri much richer a uh, visualization. Yeah. 
I'm just trying to uh, make sure that the screen is showing up correctly. So hopefully that fixed the issue with uh, the screen showing up in, uh, in split screen. Uh, really, all I've been doing was going through uh, some of this code. So uh, um, hopefully um, that didn't detract too much from um, seeing what I've been uh, doing. So um, basically, the way, that, you know, the way that you're able to add these traces, um, you, define your, um, you define your type. So whether you're building a bar chart, um, a box plot, um, any sort of uh, uh, chart type and also mapping your variables. So in this way, it works similar to what you're able to uh, do with ggplot, where you have your um, variables, um, where you have your variables mapped, and you're able to show your, um, uh, you're able to just simply add your traces in that way. Hopefully that finally fixed um, the issue that we're having. So you're able to, um, as I mentioned, just um, add that trace and then begin to um, make layout uh, changes. So um, the layout, uh, layout changes affect the entire graph, not just individual traces. So things like your title, x-axis, uh, y-axis settings. Um, and you can see here I'm actually using this to uh, make sure that my um, my states are in a particular order. I wanted the graph to um, show show them in descending order so that you're able to more easily make those uh, comparisons. Um, so similarly, you're able to create uh, uh, to create you know other graphs and uh, send those to your um, to your account. So for um, for the second graph, uh, we're just looking at a box plot, and we're going to be making a comparison of employment among uh, these different companies. So this is more of a summary graph. And now we're going to delve in a bit to um, the various measures that we have associated with each of these companies and um, looking at the distribution of employment. So similarly to before, you could um, just look at this in a um, in an exploratory sort of way within R Studio, you're able to um, just view your uh, graph on uh, in your uh, viewer right here. Um, in this case, we're just defining our type uh, to be box and mapping our variables accordingly. So in this case, we're um, separating these companies by industry, um, and uh, because this is New York, we're sort of delving into uh, New York, I forgot to mention we were doing that. Um, and then just adding that trace and uh, changing some layout se uh, settings. So uh, very similar to what we did before. And we'll just uh, send that over to, um, to our Plotly account. So one note in terms of um, how to use uh, Plotly for R, I won't go into uh, too much detail for the next two charts, but you're able to access the um, R reference page at Plotly slash R. And by looking, uh, by looking here, you're able to see um, uh, essentially um, a, a layout of different chart types. And you're able to just select which plot type you're building and see tons of ex uh, helpful examples. So um, this is a great resource if you're getting started with the API and you, um, or you have a specific goal in mind, you, know, you want to create a specific kind of chart, and you just want to get an idea of how that um, works within R. So this just gives you a lot of working examples that you could then build on top of to, um, to create your charts. So, you could see how, um, how a lot of these are um, being used. And you'll get a good idea um, through looking at these examples of how the uh, Plotly API is designed overall.
So to go through the uh, uh, last two graphs, um, next, you know, if we're, if we're looking at the health of um, the New York economy, we may want to uh, take a look at, um, at, at housing prices and see how these um, various company trends are, you know, either affecting or not affecting um, housing prices. So we could just take a look at new data. Um, in this case, just looking at, um, at housing prices. And this is utilizing um, the uh, automatic grouping of, uh, of Plotly. So um, we're starting the same way, adding uh, the data frame, and that's going to inform the uh, formulas within our um, add traces, add lines, um, functions following. And in addition to choosing our X and Y, we're adding this color uh, variable. So if you look at the structure of the data, we have um, a time series, we have our housing price index, and we have the housing types uh, divided by tier. So in this case, you know, this is a pretty um, standard uh, format for data to be in. And this lets us easily um, group by a certain variable and get the, um, and get the, the graph that we want. So um, having three housing tiers, one would expect three traces like this. So similarly, we'll send this to our, um, to our Plotly account. And lastly, we'll just look at a heat map um, to give us another comparison of uh, what's happening um, overall in uh, a lot of our states. So um, we'll be looking at industry versus state and just kind of use a heat map to get an idea of, um, and, then, and in this case, we're looking at revenue. So we'll get an idea of um, which industries have the strongest revenues in which states, um, what the distribution across different industries look like in each state, um, and, and vice versa, looking at um, industries across um, states and that distribution. So we're just um, manipulating the data a bit more. This is that same data set, uh, just um, making it into a heat map format. So you can see we're just looking at state versus industry. And that's what I'm doing over here. And once I create that, you could see, um, again, a preview of what it is that we're looking at. We have our um, various revenue measures. And already, right off the bat, we could see where you know, we have um, hotspots of industries. So you, know, you could see, um, uh, see states with stronger economies. You could see um, industries that are stronger in certain states. So this gives us a nice two-dimensional view of that. And and then um, similarly to, to before, we're using, um, in this case, uh, for graphs three and four, I introduced um, the specific um, functions, so add lines and add heat maps. Um, if you add trace, you could always just define what your type is going to be, but um, there are some ready-made functions that, let it, that make it easy to add um, uh, various chart types. So you know, in this case, all I'm working with is uh, mapping my uh, data variables. So I have my Z and then um, defining what my X and Y uh, row names and column names are going to be. Then lastly, I'll um, API create this and send this over to my Plotly account. And so now that we have all of our um, files sent to our Plotly account, we're going to create a dashboard. And um, once again, you know, we're going to end up with something that uh, looks um, that looks similar to this. So, if you want to create a dashboard, um, you just hover over this um, create. And you get to choose which file type you want to uh, work with. So um, like I mentioned, you are able to uh, create and edit charts, uh, data sets, 
various different uh, um, file types, but we're going to be focusing on dashboards this time. So when we go here, um, you start out with a blank uh, dashboard and um, you know, you'll get started uh, by adding various elements. So here you can see the three elements that we have. Um, we're able to add plots, uh, text, or um, web pages via iframe. So plots are pretty easy to just um, capture from your account. So you could see that um, I could just select, uh, select a plot here. Um, so we could start out adding our bar chart. And you could see that you have the ability to begin moving these around. So we only have one plot that doesn't really give us much freedom in terms of layout, but we could um, just add some more and uh, begin to um, manipulate our layout. So um, you're able to pretty easily just drag and drop um, these graphs wherever you want. Change the heights, change the width, and just continue adding um, different plots. So we'll um, add our third and fourth plots. Um, you're able to get pretty fine-tuned with the layout. So um, if I wanted something like this, where I have a more vertically oriented uh, bar chart here, and I wanted to kind of get a more um, complex mosaic um, going, I'm able to just simply move that um, to where it's desired and, uh, and display my plot there. So this works with any plots that you're adding as well as any other elements. So if you wanted to add a um, text element, you would be able to add it um, using this method. The um, great thing about the text um, fields is they are uh, Markdown supported. So you're able to um, use various uh, Markdown to um, kind of style um, your text and get different headers, uh, get different bullet points. Um, you also have uh, the ability to use what's over here to um, to help with your formatting. And once you're done, you just hit save and move that over here. In terms of uh, creating a uh, creating a dashboard, this is pretty much the um, you know we've hit on really the major um, the major points of creating a dashboard. So within minutes. As you see, you're able to just add the um, graphs to your dashboard. And then uh, once you reach this stage, it comes down to fine tuning um, your style. So if you go over the settings over here, you're able to um, add things such as logos. So here I have the New York State flag that we could add. You could change the title. And you could change uh, various um, colors and text and layout. So when you're looking at your, um, so here, for example, to you know, get the um, background to match roughly what we had here, I'm able to um, just simply make those changes using a uh, drop down like this. That's kind of roughly where, um, where we ended up. Once you've created your dashboard, you're able to save it. So we could just save this as our New York um, New York Economic Barometer, and you could um, change. And at this step, you could set the privacy of um, your graph. So um, you can see the three levels of privacy: public, uh, private, as well as private link. And uh, these correspond to um, different restrictions. So private means that it's um, only viewable to people that you share um, your dashboard with. Um, public means that anyone on the web um, can view it and it's um, added to the Plotly community. 
Um, and then private link means it's um, private, not indexed, um, won't be able to be searchable. Um, but if you uh, if someone has the unique URL um, along with a share key, they'll be able to view the uh, graph, uh, view the dashboard or graph. And then you have this share modal here, where you're able to um, add collaborators. So um, you could just simply add people by um, by username. So here I've added a colleague of mine, or uh, you could um, access the link. So if you do have a private link, you could see that um, a share key gets uh, appended to that. And one last thing to show off um, is the update portion of this webinar. So um, I mentioned that um, the key point here is to create and update your, um, uh, your dashboards. And once you create something like this, um, it's great for you know, a, way, a way of sharing, um, uh, sharing data, sharing in, um, analysis that you're working with. But um, in order to truly you know, see the power of what you could do with this, um, you could update graphs um, as data gets new. So you could imagine if you have a time series, you get new data coming in, you'll be um, adding new observations. Or if you have, um, in this case, we're looking at company records. So if new companies get added, then we'll be able to update the underlying data. Um, and that could be done straight from R. So we'll actually go um, to our uh, first graph here. And we'll, um, we'll just, um, for the sake of sort of showing what's happening, we'll be just simply changing some of the layout of the graph. So rather than changing the data, um, we'll just change the color of our uh, bars. So um, we'll make these orange and now you could see um, that we just have a restyled graph. Um, and the key to updating your graph is uh, this file name argument within API create. Uh, what this does is this sends it to a particular plotly file name and updates that chart with the um, with what you newly created. So if I send this off, you'll see a um, and actually if you've noticed you'll be you've been seeing those uh, warning messages saying that this already exists and it's overwriting it. Um, which is what we want in this case. We want to be able to continually overwrite our charts with new um, with new data as new information is uh, uh, is coming to light. And it pops up here, but more importantly, if I um, go to my dashboard and I refresh, you'll see that um, that new graph showed up here. So again, it's um, kind of um, you know, meaningless that we just change the uh, color of the trace. But um, you could obviously imagine this uh, sort of extending to adding new data and plotting, uh, and plotting an update to that. So someone would be able to um, bookmark a dashboard like this and be assured that they're getting the most recent data um, when they're looking at it. So, um, using nothing but R and Plotly, you're able to kind of create a live view of um, a live dashboard, a live view of your analysis. So uh, that concludes our uh, webinar. Um, and I'll just uh, go here for um, a few questions. So I'm just looking at the chat.
So one question I see in the chat is uh, plots that are not generated uh, using Plotly will also work well. Um, uh, will they also work within the dashboard? Um, Plotly dashboards are meant to um, work with Plotly charts. So it's um, uh, you know you're able to uh, whenever you see a um, you know a plot uh, type like clicking on the plot button to add it to a dashboard. Those refer to um, Plotly charts. You are able to include any other web content via an iframe. So that would include um, if you have charts created by other means. But um, uh, but in terms of you know having it be plugged into the plot type, that's um, um, it would have to be a Plotly plot. Um, and we also have the question, uh, can you create these dashboards with the Plotly free account? Um, you absolutely can. And the main, um, the main difference between free accounts, uh, free community accounts, and professional and enterprise accounts are, um, the, uh, are just sort of um, API limits, so the number of times you're able to call an API, and uh, more importantly, the ability to create private charts. So, with a free account, you won't be able to um, uh, you won't be able to create private charts, um, but you will be able to create community dashboards and community uh, plots. Um, so, from uh, uh, we have one question: Are there ways to make the graphs interactive? Um, the uh, so there are. Um, and let me share my screen just to show off. Um, just to show that, uh, just to show off a few um, functionality, a few points of functionality. So you are able to add um, some uh, uh, some simple controls to Plotly graphs. So here you could see things like buttons, range sliders, and drop down events. Um, so this goes through a few examples of what you're able to do there. Um, these are pretty much tied to the graphs themselves. So you could see like um, you essentially have a Plotly visualization and you're adding a um, control to that graph. Um, so things like dashboard, uh, things like dropdowns, uh, range sliders, et cetera. Those are being added on a plot by plot basis. Um, you are able to get, um, to get some pretty compelling um, compelling graphs using those, uh, those types of controls. But, uh, and this is I'm just showing off an example of um, kind of the um, most, sophist most sophisticated you're able to um, get a dashboard. So using things like range sliders, um, animation buttons to uh, show off um, a bit more of, um, of what you're looking at. And when you're you, so you're able to add these controls um, in terms of more sophisticated uh, controls. So things like multiple drop downs, or um, you know, really adding more sophisticated logic to um, to your dashboard. Um, we'll actually uh, in the next webinar we'll be going through our um, Dash framework, which um, uh, which at the moment is only available in Python, but it um, you know, essentially provides a full-fledged web app framework, which allows you to really um, build you know, truly um, sophisticated interactive apps. Um, so we have a few more questions here. Um, using the API offline, when I was going through the API in R and we were viewing the graphs in the, um, uh, in the lower right-hand side, um, essentially everything before we used API create, um, that's using the API offline. So it absolutely is possible to use it offline um, in kind of that exploratory way. Um, and I didn't go through this in this webinar. Um, this is another question from Scott. If there is a uh, function that converts ggplots, uh, ggplot objects to uh, plotly plot, um, those are uh, those are available. So there's a function called ggplotly, which um, just simply uh, does that conversion for you.
Uh, that's a very good point in terms of the interoperability of um, ggplot, you know, translating that to Plotly. Um, this lecture will be saved uh, for later viewing. And, um, and then uh, one quest another question in terms of uh, sharing a Plotly dashboard with a customer. Um, I went through the share modal, how you're able to share it with another Plotly user. So um, at first brush, if that customer is a, um, is a Plotly uh, subscriber, you'll be able to just share it in that same way. Um, you're also able to just simply copy and paste the link. So when I created uh, my dashboard, it lives at its own unique URL, and you would be able to uh, send that to a customer. Um, and then in terms of uh, the maximum number of updates uh, per second for a dashboard, um, the, um, I, I don't know what the exact granularity is there, but as you saw um, how it works, it's essentially utilizing a REST API uh, through R. So um, one could imagine that, the, um, that you, know, you have a cron job uh, set up with an R script, and it's um, and you know you could set the frequency of that to whatever you want you know whatever you want, um, but the uh, but essentially those updates that that come through um, a user would have to refresh to see that um, to see that change. So really, that's what um, uh, what I would um, see as the main kind of um, sort of choke point there um, for um, for a number of updates. Um, if you do have an on-premise uh, Plotly, we do have a streaming API that comes with that. Um, but um, uh, so uh, so that um, has a 50 millisecond uh, resolution. Um, but in terms of using the REST API, it's um, you know the, you can set the cron job however frequently you want. But the main uh, choke point would just be how your um, how the user is refreshing that. So in other words, I can't really uh, function as a streaming service. Do we have any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for attending this webinar, and uh, hope to see you next time. Hope everyone has a great day.